Hi everybody, this is Miss Murphy, and I'm here to talk about the next layer in your watercolor painting for your Wanderlust landscape painting. Um, and so I've already gone over the first process in your steps. Um, and the first process and technique that we talked about was the underpainting, which is essentially where you're defining the light and dark values throughout, throughout and creating a little more depth and dimension in your painting. So now we're going on to the next layers and with watercolors, it's all about that transparency. So one thing to consider as you're continuing and adding your layers in is how transparent those layers are going to be as you continue. So I've already started a little bit here just to show you what that looks like. Um, underneath on the mountains, I had mostly my blue tones, uh, light and dark values of blue, kind of like a monochromatic um, value scheme there. Um, and also I'm gonna go on top because my mountains happen to be kind of greenish brown. So I'm gonna go in with some green, but I wanna make sure, and I'm gonna kind of in my tray here, dilute it a little bit. So if you can in a, this could even be on a plate, whatever you have at home, but in your watercolor dish, you can just open it up and um, you can mix up your colors. You can also dilute them and then just clean it out when you're done. Um, so I'm just showing you as I go on top with my green, it's already darkening in, but I diluted it enough so that this layer is transparent enough that I can see my layers underneath. So I definitely would say don't go too dark when you do this because the whole point was to really be able to see those layers underneath. So I'm going to go over top of this some more with my green and I can I might want some of these areas darker. Like I'm going to be making this actually darker up in this foreground, but right now I just wanted to kind of go over this a little bit with my green and my back, the background here, I want this to be lighter. This, I'm um, looking at a photograph, by the way. So I'm looking at the values. This area, I'm gonna keep it as it is. I'm just gonna add a little bit of gray on top because the mountains are actually white and they're snowy and there's, it's just kind of gray tones, but I wanted that blue tone underneath. And then I have my water, but like I said in here, it actually gets darker. So I wanted to, oops, that's a little too dark there. I actually wanted to mix in a little bit of my brown. And one of the techniques that I'm gonna be using ultimately is my dry brush. Once this is dry, I'm gonna, I'm actually building up a few layers because there's a couple trees down here and I wanted this area to be darker. So I'm gonna continue also with my water. Under, I already started a little bit, but I just wanted to show you what that looks like. And so I just wanted to help you to see what these layers really look like. Now these, I would not say are the best quality watercolors, the ones that you were given in your package, but they will work if you know how to use them properly. And also, if you plan your layers well, and maybe even if you have a separate piece of paper, like what I've been doing is I practice diluting my, my color. So I might have a little spot and then I might take a little bit of that, dab it over here and then see like what different values I get. So that's something else you could do as you go here. I might try that with this. Um, and for my water, I'm building up these layers. I, am, I do want some of the middle here to be darker, but I'm going to kind of build up these layers like so. I'm going, I'm painting like much faster than I usually do, but I just wanted to give you a little glimpse about what you're doing with your next steps. And I have a little bit of dark here, but I'm actually spreading it around. So this is kind of like a wash on top, but I'm gonna, when this dries, 
I'm gonna do some very dry brush um, on here and to make more texture in the water. And I also really wanna go along this edge here. I'm gonna darken this edge a little bit with the dark blue. So, and then I'm, like I said, gonna go in and start really defining those darker areas. And I'm gonna even go back over top of this. I can even go back on top of my water a little bit here, but this is just an example. I would obviously let this dry a little more. I can do a little of this while it's still wet, but depends on how you want it to look. Depends on, so I'm gonna let the, I'm gonna actually go, keep going with this, but this just kind of shows you how I am therefore building up my layers in here. And I'm dragging out this uh, blue that I added on the edge. It's another little technique that I do sometimes. So um, just kind of, if you paint a, a, uh, if you paint an outline and then you can just drag along the edge there. So you can already see how I'm building up the layers and adding to um, the depth in my painting. And you can still see underneath the layers that I already created in my underpainting. Um, so I just wanted to share that with you as you go along. Just make sure you're really thinking about what co your color choices are. Um, remember that you're doing an expressionistic style of painting here. So um, we looked at different styles where um, artists actually change the colors. So you don't have to do uh, usual colors. You can make something unusual like the sky or even the, the water, change the color a little bit, enhance it um, according to the mood or tone that you would like to convey. And remember to have that separate piece of paper for mixing and figuring out your color choices. All right, thank you and good luck with your next steps.